My name is Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet. Today we're going to answer the age-old question that only I would think of. Uh, what's faster? Booting a Western Digital Caviar freaking ATA 100 7200 RPM hard drive to Windows 7 on a computer from 2003. Got the old Dell back out there. Or is it faster to boot from an SD card. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to find out, but we're definitely going to figure it out. It's going to be a fun video today, so stick around and maybe it'll, maybe it'll be a fun video. I don't know, but I, let's have a word. We have a sponsor today. We have a sp word from our sponsor. And I'll be back right after this. Today's video is sponsored by FSP, one of my favorite case and power supply manufacturers. Whether you want an inexpensive feature packed quality computer case, a high end tower style CPU cooler, or a powerful rock solid power supply, FSP has you covered. Their CMT line of cases have everything from budget solutions priced around $50 to full tempered glass RGB beauties like the CMT 510 and 520. They also have powerful power supply solutions for any situation from budget PC to full on server. I have been reviewing their stuff since way before this sponsorship and I've always been surprised at the price to performance that FSP offers. See links in the description to browse their products available on Amazon and Newegg. I highly recommend them. Okay, so we're answering that age old question. Uh, does Windows 7 boot, which is a pretty newer operating system for this PC, boot faster off an IDE hard drive uh, compared to an SD card with one of these fancy doohickeys? This is an SD to IDE controller or adapter, or whatever you want to call it. Basically, it allows you to plug in your standard IDE like input, you know, the ribbon cable, the old style, if you remember that, you damn millennials. And I uh, definitely remember that. Uh, and it allows you to plug in actually just a floppy, like the, there's most of these uh, power supplies that even still have these floppy power supply. You can plug it into a PCIe bracket, or uh, sorry, PCI bracket, I should say, and kind of run it off there. And it's a cool tool to use. Uh, mostly because you can use it on like a Windows 95 retro build, something like that. If you want to swap operating systems, it's very easy. Often on older computers, it's very hard to get information off on and off of them. With this, it's cool. You could just turn the computer off, take the SD card out, put it in an SD card reader on a regular Windows system. It's going to read it as file 32 or whatever. You're going to be able to transfer some drivers over, plug it back in, boot the system. And this does all the work of the, the controller. It looks like an IDE hard drive in Windows setup in Windows. As far as Windows is concerned, this is an IDE hard drive and it's doing some, like there's a little chip on there that's actually doing some, uh, you know, ins and outs to make this happen. Now you could use uh, the old Compact flash cards. Those are actually like straight up IDE and there are, you know, different ones for that, but I believe those are a lot slower. And although there are some limitations to this, uh, you know, we're running with a much faster medium. This is an ultra uh, 80 megabyte a second, uh, you know, class 10 uh, SDHC card. I've written 4K video to these. There's, there's no problem. Now there are faster uh, cards out there, but I've already done the legwork and the research to know that the SD card speed is not going to be an issue here. Like a faster one isn't going to help out. The little controller on here can only do so much. And I actually kind of already know that this isn't technically as fast as this hard drive. This is a 100 megabyte a second hard drive. Now it doesn't actually go that fast, but uh, this is an 80 megabyte a second hard drive. On my uh, really high end system over here with the USB 3, I actually get about 96 megabytes read speeds off of this thing and about, uh, I think it was 40 or something right or, or 60 right. I, I'll show it up on the screen here. This is not going to be a bottleneck at all. It actually runs a little bit slower on, well, quite a bit slower on this system. I've already done the legwork to work. So I've gone through the painful process of installing Windows 7, which this machine doesn't really like. I mean, it's a P4, we're basically first generation. This is a Dell Dimension 8300. It has onboard SATA even, but uh, it's like SATA Gen 1. We can explore that later, maybe see if it's worth putting a SATA hard drive instead of this on a, like a retro build if you have the ports, even though they're first gen or whatever. But 
you know, we're, we're gonna, I've installed Windows on this, Windows 7. I've installed uh, a Chrome. Uh, I've turned the Windows Update service off, so we're not going to have any interference from that. And then uh, all I did besides that is install the Sound Blaster driver because I had to put a Sound Blaster in here because the original onboard audio I couldn't get to work with Windows 7. But other than that, it actually loads into Windows 7 and it's, it's not too, too bad. So what I want to do is, uh, since I have basically the exact same install of this and this, they just fresh Windows, barely anything's installed, like I said, except for Crystal Disk Mark, which we will use to test both of these items. I'm going to plug this back in. I'm going to go ahead and run a timer on how fast it takes me to load into Windows from the button press open a Chrome browser to where it's uh, responsive. Now it's Windows 7, so it's running you know, the latest Chrome browser. There's no issues there, even though it's 32-bit. And uh, go to YouTube. I'm going to play, uh, I'll, I'll go to my channel and play the latest video, okay? Once that's played for five seconds, I will close that tab and open up a new tab, and I want to download CPU-Z and install it. And then uh, once it's installed and I have it open, We'll stop the timer, and we'll do that on both and see which one's faster. Now, I believe the read speeds on this are a lot faster, but you hear this hard drive working, and it's the access times. It's how long it takes to actually get doing what it's doing that's going to be the bottleneck for this hard drive. This thing is a solid-state drive. It's, it's, it's stand flash. It's going to access the minute that it's asked the, you know, for the information, but it's going to do it slower. So is it worth using this as a hard drive replacement on a retro build? I, I think the answer is yes. And then there are all the other benefits to it. Uh, you know, the easy access to old you know, files and stuff, file systems and stuff like that. Just taking this out, plugging it in a modern system to transfer files. Let's say you don't have drivers or whatever. There are benefits to this outside of the speed of it. And although the speed, the rewrite speed, isn't exactly you know, the main reason to go for this, I believe the access times is what's going to make this worth it. So let's go ahead and do the thing. We'll do it quickly, get it out of the way, and then we'll come back and discuss the results. Because I'm interested to see, is it worth just keeping this thing in here and not putting this back in? Because I plan on doing some more work with this system with, hold on, this baby. This is a Radeon X800 XT which is a very high-end graphics card, arguably one of the fastest in the world, yada, yada. There are actually even faster versions of this, and there's even a PCIe version of this, but this is a freaking mad-ass video card, and I want to do a little review on it, and I need a system that's going to play some older games with it, because, of, of course, this is not, you know, you're not going to be playing them. <laughs> any DirectX 11 has got DirectX 9 support and whatnot. But let's see if this is worth, like, this costs 16 bucks. 16 bucks. It's definitely worth looking into, and what's the cost of a you know, half decent SD card? Go ahead and queue up the thingy, Timmy Joe! Woo! Okay, so we have some conclusions, and you saw there, this thing is significantly faster booting into Windows and doing a few tasks than the standard ID hard drive, the 7200 RPM, 2 megs of cache, you know, a standard affair for the last generation of ID hard drives. This is faster than it, which is pretty cool. It's like a little solid state for your old hardware. Keep in mind, this is some of the best hardware, you know, you could be using with this. This will work excellent with some old Pentium stuff. It works very well. Just, just plug and play. There's no drivers. There's no worries. So, yeah, we saw there was a significant uh, difference loading into Windows, executing programs, and uh, although, you know, it's actually not 
as fast as an IDE hard drive. Uh, I'll show you Crystal Disk Mark here, which will put some shed some light on it. Basically, uh, you know, we got 40, almost 40 read and 43 write on the IDE hard drive for the sequential uh, Q32T1, and then 25 and 20 on this thing. So this is, you know, slower by quite a bit in actual just like writing to the drive speeds, but it's the access times that make this so much better, so compelling. So this one is called the uh, Phoenix SD to IDE 3.5 Baffle International Drive Adapter Board. I'll leave a link in the description to my Amazon affiliate so you can, you know, make I can make the whatever 15 points on the $15, whatever that these things are, but it's totally worth it for an old retro build. And this, like I said, is the best hardware you could be using with it. It'll work amazing for some, you know, early Pentium stuff. You want to get into like, uh, you know, 386s and stuff like that. As long as it's IDE, it's plug and play. It's real easy. So uh, what, what else? Well, what about gaming? Okay. So I got the uh, Radeon X800 XT in here now. And I loaded up Far Cry, same on both partitions. And as you see, I'm running a little test to see which one loads into the game right and or the faster. And we see here that the uh, IDE hard drive doesn't actually uh, you know lose out by that much, about eight seconds. Uh, you know, so it's still faster loading into games. You know, before that you're actually in the game and, and running around and playing. But you know, it's not bad. It's not really quite the difference I was expecting. So, but then keep in mind this is running Windows and you know uh, the, the the game at the same time, pulling that information. Maybe what would be the best of both worlds is if you ran Windows off this, like an SSD, and then you had your ID hard drive for all your games. You know, and then everything would be pretty pretty snappy. So. Pretty easy to find an RD, IDE hard drive these days, but you know, like they're just people are throwing them out left, right, and center. But is it going to be a good one? Is it going to be working? Is something wrong? Well, this is an amazing solution considering you can go buy a what twenty-five dollar SD card. This thing's fifteen bucks Canadian, so like for around thirty, forty dollars, you have a very good solution that's super faster than an IDE hard drive in certain situations. It's it's a you know a win win situation for sure. So I'm not watching me join Instagram, Twitter. I think we learned a lot today. I know that these uh, old systems they just take forever to get going and do videos on because it's just so long to load Windows 7 from a USB like 1.0 or whatever, uh, you know, and get them installed on two different hard drive solutions. And then you gotta go find drivers for your Radeon 800. We'll talk about that later, but we're, I'll definitely be doing a video on the Radeon that's in here now. It seems like a pretty cool card. This seems like a pretty fair system for uh, use of it. And uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend using this thing, the Phoenix uh, SDID adapter. It works very, very well, plug and play, no issues. And it's cheap, it's inexpensive. You know, you can get it rolling in an old retro system and definitely one that's like much older than this and it's gonna make you have a much better time so i want to thank you guys for watching thank you fsp for sponsoring this video as well as keep in mind i do have timmy joe t-shirts there's the quit staring at my gpus shirt there's the i watch videos about computers on the internet shirt there's links in the description below i also have a patreon the more patreon stuff the less ads you'll see on the channel so keep in mind on that uh, but you got to pay the bills somehow. But for now, I'm going to go. I'm going to say thanks very much for watching. This has been a pretty interesting little, uh, you know, look into some older hardware. And you'll definitely be seeing this Dell with the Radeon in it in an upcoming review of that video card. But, you know, you got to hang out. You got to do what you, what you do how to do. And I'm Matt. Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. Hit the like 1,000 times. Hit the bell. Hit the bell again. And then hit the bell. I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks very much for watching.